time kills deals. You, you can't be like, oh yeah, well I'm available in like two days. People don't want to do that. Like, yeah. you know, especially when you're starting, they're ready to go, yeah. get on the phone with them and, and close them. If not, you're going to kill a lot of deals. And I tell my salespeople a lot that, listen, you, you, you have somebody ready to sign a contract. Why, why wouldn't you close that deal? Like, yeah. even, even if it's at 10 at night. This is The Fighting Entrepreneur, the podcast dedicated to entrepreneurs looking to change the world. Learn how to start, build, and scale a business in today's highly competitive business environment. Here's your host, The Fighting Entrepreneur, Anik Singhal. What's up, you crazy fighting entrepreneurs? Welcome back to another powerful episode. Uh, and we're actually going to do something new. So I'll tell you about that in just a second. But this is Onyx Singhal. And I'm actually very excited about today's episode because I have been stalking our guest for the last year. And I've been very impressed. So first and foremost, let's say hello to our new guest. Mike, what's up, man? How what's are you? What's going on, Onyx? All right. Thanks for driving down here from sunny New Jersey yeah. uh, to be with us. Uh, all right. So what we're going to do before I introduce Mike and tell you how badass he is, um, we're going to split this interview into two interviews released on two different days. So I'm actually going to try to get more bang for our buck here with our guests and get more information out of them. So today we're going to cover starting an agency, getting your first five clients. So whatever kind of agency you have, it could be a marketing agency, basically for starting a consulting firm or a coaching firm. I think what you're going to learn will apply. And then of course, the next one we will do about how to scale the marketing used to scale your agency. Now, if you're listening, remember, go to onicpodcast.com for the brand new show notes. Um, also, uh, we're going to be doing a brand new website soon there. You'll be able to search it, leave comments, engage, build a community. And if you want to chat about this particular episode, go to the Learn Nation Facebook group and you can do that there. All right. So let's dive right in. Uh, Mike, before we can even start, we have a little, uh, we have a little uh, tradition here at the Fighting Entrepreneurs. So if you could raise your right hand. <laughs> to take a second to bear that. All right. I, I was like, let me not mess this up. I'm on camera. All right. So I, I Mike Buentempo. I'm Mike Bontempo. Bontempo. Yeah, Bontempo. I, I'm never going to get that right. By the way, I don't know how to spell it either still yet. So it's I'm good. Mike Bontempo. I'm Mike Bontempo. Do solemnely swear. Do solemnly to swear. To tell the truth and nothing but the truth. To tell the truth and nothing but the truth. And reveal all of my agency building secrets. And reveal all of my agency building secrets. Sweet. All right. <laughs> See, now we got you on record and you have to do this. So, you know, before we start into the rounds, um, first of all, thank you for being here because uh, I think that everyone listening has got a lot to learn. Anyone's looking to build an agency or a coaching or a consulting company. Um, I I think we go way back, right? I think yeah. you, you had said that you actually took one of my programs like almost eight years ago or nine years ago called yeah, Empire yeah, Formula. Yeah, nine years. But even then, when do you remember the last time that, what was, what was the time we met? It's been a couple of years. Like yeah. actually met, met. Like in person? You or talk? just got to talk. So the first time we talked was actually on Facebook when you finally accepted my uh, friend request. <laughs> so so you, you accepted it. I'm like, wow, finally. So I messaged you. I that was, was just a mistake. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I messaged you. How long you, ago was that? Probably three years, maybe. Okay, yeah. May, maybe two and a half, but I think three. Okay. So you, you accepted me and I just said, hey, man, you know, I loved Empire Formula. Um, it's one of the reasons why I dropped out of college and, you know, went after marketing full time. Yes. <laughs> you know, I'm I want- single, encouraging people to drop out of college. That is yeah. my, uh, so, awesome. you know, I kind of spent uh, the last of my like money on that course and then I was going through it and, you know, I had, I had like marketing professors that I'd argue with and stuff and they're talking about like theory and I'm like, you know, have you ever really gone out there and built yeah. your own business? Oh, well, you know, I could, but yeah. but they, they haven't. So I was like, you know what? I don't want to learn from these people. I want to learn from people who are actually doing it. Mm -hmm dropped out and um, been doing it full time ever since. That's awesome. How old are you? Actually, I'm, I've never asked you this. 27. 27. And right now, you how how much revenue are you doing currently with your agency? A little over $100,000 a month. Over 100,000. And what kind of re like what kind of margins? What kind of profit? How much of that is profit for you? Probably 50%. That, not may, bad. May, maybe 45. But not, not bad. Yeah. 40, 45,000 dollars a month. Yeah, um, pretty no. killer stuff. All right. So, um, what all right well we're going to talk about all of that um you know i saw about a year ago maybe a little over a year ago you started posting these posts on your facebook page and that's what got my attention and so initially it looked so innocent it looked like oh just mike trying to be a nice guy 
And now I've come to see it was incredibly devious and incredibly uh, plotted and systematic and it worked and you've pulled money out of me. I've, I've literally paid this guy thousands of dollars. I'm still trying to figure out how to get that money back, <laughs> but uh, worth every penny, worth every penny, I'd pay you twice as much because it's been great advice. He's shared great knowledge. I love the fact, I love the idea of knowing that, you know, whatever, nine, 10 years ago, you took a course of mine that maybe had even a 0.5% influence in your life and that now I get to pay you and learn from you. That, that's like the coolest story altogether. So today, what I want to talk to you about is uh, I want to go through your marketing model. I want to understand the, the numbers, the details, and the systems you put in place to get your first clients. But the very first thing I want to ask you is why I know your history. You've done a lot of different things. You've been in the CPA space. You've done trial business. You've done a lot of different things. We were talking about that recently. How'd you land up on this? Like, why are you building an agency? And just talk a little bit about that. Tell me a little bit about why now, why this? So really why, like, I love driving paid traffic. Like I love putting together marketing campaigns on Facebook, YouTube, and Google. And, uh, you know, I know, like, I'm a big, I'm, analytical so i like looking at numbers and i know the average client is okay at facebook ads and like not great so i know i could come in and really help somebody at a very very high level and get them results and you know hit their cpas and, and all that and they're going to pay me a, a handsome fee um to to do that for them and it's 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 an easier sale than some some of these other things you know mm -hmm. where you know high ticket coaching and everything like high level business owners they don't they don't want coaching they want somebody to just hey just run my ads for me you know i see what you're doing so they want doing yeah exactly yeah. exactly so you know like a, a guy that's doing three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars a month, he's not gonna be like, "Oh, Mike, I want to join your coaching program." He wants me to run his Facebook ads, or run his yeah. YouTube ads, or his Google ads, and everything. And it's easy for them to pay me, you know, ten thousand dollars a month up front, plus ten percent of the ad spend. So, you know, I have some of the clients that pay me up to twenty thousand dollars a month. I mean, you don't need too many clients like that to to make a nice um, income that's, for yourself. That's amazing. And and you know, to talk more to that, so you made a conscious effort where you decided you want to go after the higher level of clients you don't want to go after this and I think a lot of people trying to build an agency they make the mistake of starting small charging less going for the smaller clients because it's easier but then eventually they learn that those clients are actually not the best clients but to kind of a testament to that you're absolutely right like I don't want to join a mastermind I don't have time for that I don't have time to get on your coaching calls although I have no argument that they're probably very powerful but rather I'd, I would rather pay you what it probably costs for a year of your coaching program to just get you to come down here for a day yep. and to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, ask you very pointed questions. So you're right. So uh, just so everyone understands, Mike has built a, a uh, paid media agency. So he helps run people's paid media ad, uh, campaigns, but you can also work with him and you can hire him for an hour consult or for a day. I've done both of those. And so when you are, when you have that reach and you have people looking to you, there's multiple ways you can profit from it. And, and you can also productize that, which is something you've also done, which now you're building scalable funnels that don't need a physical presence of Mike. But we'll talk more about that in epi like the second part of this, uh, this series. So I see why you built the agency. We're going to talk about your pricing models. We're going to talk about all of those things. Um, I want to jump right in because we're going to talk about how you got your first five clients. So round number one, I'm going to start a little bit differently. All right. So round number one, I want you to tell me three or four or five, how many ever you want, of the biggest lessons you've learned because you started your agency just a short while ago. I mean, you've boomed. I think how long? When did you start officially? June June fifth. I took my first client. June fifth last of year, two thousand eighteen. Yeah. And so we're sitting as of the day we're recording this, uh, April 29th or say twenty eighth or seventh. Yeah, twenty. All right. So we're now what eight, nine, nine, ten months or something like that. Yeah. All right. So in that time, you went from zero to building over a hundred thousand dollar a month agency, and what did you learn? So someone like we've got people right now that are watching, they're listening live that are trying to start their own agency. What are a few mistakes you made that if that you would tell them, like, do not do that? Um, first things first would be you're probably charging too little. Okay. Um, uh, the first t client I took on was like two thousand dollars a month. Um, you know, now I have like we start at four thousand dollars a month for for our agency. And then 
also to add a and or um, thing into the contract. So, you know, for clients that want to scale up that spend two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars a month with us, we get ten percent of that ad spend. So essentially, let's say a client um, gets our ten thousand dollar a month package. If we spend two hundred thousand um, dollars a month for for that two hundred thousand dollars for that month, we get another ten thousand dollars at the end of the month. So I mean that really really helps you, and it it incentivizes your team. So like I have a team of media buyers, so I give them fifteen percent commissions on that ten percent. So let's just say that was their account, uh, they would get an extra fifteen. What? They make more money. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah you know, they're going to get an extra fifteen hundred dollars a month. You know, if they get if they have two of those accounts, they're making an extra three thousand dollars. So, you know, they're going to be happier. Um, your client's going to be happier because you have um, uh, an incentive to scale okay. them as well. And uh, you know, overall, it's just it's just a better model. You know, like. It's do you think that applies? Is it just in the paid media world? Like, how do I apply percentage of if I'm building? Um, like we'll, we'll take, uh, we'll take Crystal for example, she's going to be coming on now. She's not just doing paid media, but she's helping someone put the whole launch together. She's a more marketing consultant in her business. So how would, how would you apply percentage of for her? I mean, to, for, for actual launches, right? She, she, she yeah. helps them, I mean, get, get a piece of the pie, you know, a pie. piece of the revenue. Hey, listen, you know what? I'll take, you could even take a, a smaller percentage, um, a smaller fee up front. If you really know that guys, yeah, let's say, yeah. yeah, you know, Hey, I'm My last three launches have done a million dollars each. Listen, you know what? You pay me $2,000 up front. I know you're probably going to do it, but I want 5% of, mm -hmm. of everything. And you know, that's, you know, 50 grand. Um, mm -hmm. right, All right, right there, so, so charging. So we actually, one of our rounds was going to be, how do you charge? And you already covered that. So let's just quickly recap so we can kill that round. You do four grand a month as you're starting. That's your retainer. Yeah. And you charge a percentage of ad spend on top of that. So it becomes either or, whichever's higher. But we, we also have four uh, packages. So okay. one traffic source, let's just say, is Facebook. It's $4,000 a month or 10% of ad spend. Okay. All of these come with th three-month minimum agreements. Okay. Um, and the reason is there's so much work involved in order to get getting somebody started, the customer research, uh, you know, and really scaling a campaign that it doesn't make sense to take on a client for only one month. I yeah. just, and, and you have to educate the person that it's in their best interest. And if they're not willing to do that, they're probably not going to be a good client anyways. So okay. we do $4,000 a month, 10% of ad spend for one, one traffic source. Two traffic sources is $6,000 a month or 10% of ad spend. Our omnipresence package, where essentially it's one cold traffic source, let's say Facebook, then we retarget you across pretty much 95% of the, inter the internet. That's YouTube, Google, uh, Google Display, Google Search, uh, Instagram, and then uh, also Facebook. And then finally, we have all three cold traffic sources, and that's ten thousand dollars a month. So, how much was the third package? You didn't get the price on that. Is that oh, six thousand, probably six thousand five hundred. Six thousand five hundred. So interesting. So you're hitting up all the different, and so as you add more platforms, your retainer goes up, but the percentage stays the same. Yeah. Um, but they'll obviously spend more if yep. there are more platforms, so you would make more. Okay, so you're doing, so let, let's ask, uh, I wanna come back by the way. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna come to round, I'm gonna change round number two, but real quick, give me some more mistakes and then I know what I wanna ask on round two. Um, more mistakes, probably not not being prepared for, for a hire um, soon enough. So we were going through like we, we were taking on a ton of clients. Like, you know, we took four or five clients on like in the same week and I wanted to hire another media buyer um, to bring on, but you know, you kind of get in that um, chicken or the egg scenario mm -hmm. where you don't want to hire too many people if you're not going to have the growth. And the worst thing happened is my head media buyer just uh, up and left and just quit, sent me an email, just didn't show up. And that never happens ever. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, he ended up leaving and we were kind of scrambling. And what I had to do was I had to pick up more of the slack. And what mm -hmm. a lot of people, get stuck in is they have to, they go out, they get the sales, then they have to essentially, you know, perform and run the ads and everything. And they stop going out and prospecting. And then they lose a couple clients and they go and they get stuck on this hamster wheel instead of going out and hiring people that can actually help you. So mm. uh, one of the things that we, we just did uh, was hire remote. I was really against it at, at first, but 
when you're able to hire remote, you're able to get talent. You yeah. know, uh, a lot of people local in my, the, the people that were local that were working for me, they were green, green as, green as ever. So that means that takes anywhere from five to six months to really get them up to where they can, you know, take an, take an account on their, on their own and, and kind of run with it. Mm-hmm. And I, you don't have that type of time if you take five new clients on and, you know, you're not going to be, oh, let me just hire this guy. Like, so like, e- even if it's a short term patch, you got to hire somebody, you know, even, even remote okay. with, with skill so that they can actually help you. So be ready to hire and be ready to look virtually so that it'll help you scale early on and keep your costs down and take on more. Anything else, any other burning advice you'd give someone? Just, I'm starting a new agency, you uh, know, um, pitfall to. A pitfall. Oh, contracts. You know, yeah. I, I and it, it wasn't, it wasn't so much uh, me, um, but like a lot of my people that I coach, like, you know, they, they don't have, they don't have contracts mm-hmm. and they wonder why they get screwed out of things. Like, like, oh, I'm, I'm like, oh, well, did you, did you have a, did you well, have a contract? Where do you go to get contracts done now? So I had my lawyer put together one. Okay. And then I, when I first started, I put together one that like, you know, whatever, yeah. like it was like, it explained the services. It said you agreed to it. And do you that, use anything like legal zoom or any of these? No, I, I haven't. Do it? What yeah. did it cost you to get that done? Um, 500. Okay. Nothing, right? nothing, nothing. Okay. And, and especially, you know, when you really start to bring on a ton of clients, like you, you have to protect yourself. So, so here's something that's interesting in all of the three that you went over, not a single one of them had to do with marketing or actually getting clients. How easy or hard is it? Because I can tell you right now, most people looking to start a new agency or whatever, they think in their minds automatically, it's hard to get clients. Is it hard? I, I don't think so. I, I don't think it's that hard because well, one of the things that helps me is because I've taken on such great clients that we're able to spend a ton of money and get results for, I just post my results like all the time. So like okay. we, we just had a client. That no, we, no, no, no. Don't do this yet. Oh, okay. I, I got, I got that part coming up. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't let that cat out of the bag. That's a big part right. because I want everyone to, I want to dig deep into that because that's the devious part I, I talked about where okay. you, I thought you were innocent, but you're not. And you're about yeah. to, you're about to say exactly how plotted it is, but it's brilliant. It's, yeah. it's borderline brilliant. That's why I want to come, I want to come back to that. All right, listen, let's move on to round number two. Um, I want to talk to you about numbers and data. Okay. So round number two, how many, okay. How many clients do you have right now? Uh, like 25. Holy, wow. See, when you say that, I think, holy crap, but that's a lot of people, but okay. 25, you're doing about a hundred grand a month. You were at, you mentioned before about 50% or 45% profit margin. That's yeah. after all expenses. How many team members do you have, or do you need to facilitate 25 clients you run ads for? So right now we have three media buyers, one tech guy and one sales guy. All right. Uh, now are they all full time? Uh, mm-hmm. yes. And well, I mean, if you're counting me, it's four media buyers because I, I really, I'm, is your I'm, tech guy full time though? No, he's not. Okay, he's not. So your four media buyers are full time. Tech guy is an outsource, someone that I, I think you uh, mentioned before to me, and then the sales yeah. guy that's on site. Yes, he's full time. So you got a team of, including you, four, five, six people to facilitate a hundred thousand dollar a month business. Uh, that it means you're doing a one point two million divided by six. It's about a two hundred thousand per person uh, metric. Uh, do you need m- right now? If you were to bring on no more clients, could you stay at six people or do you need more people even right now? No, we don't need more people. So I, you would be, that would be, that would be the, yeah. you'd be spinning good. Uh, yeah. Do you sleep? Yeah, I do. Okay, I actually, good. Like, yeah. I, what's your yeah. life like? Like 25 clients, are they all vying for you? Are they messaging you all the time? Yeah, that's been one of the hard things. Uh, oh, so th- this is another big thing. And I just, I just recently started doing it. Put all of your clients into Slack. Put them into Slack, and so you have your team members. So you know if you're gonna have a media buyer and he owns that account, the client and me should all be in that Slack channel, so you can all communicate. Because what was happening was people were hitting me up on Facebook, on Skype, on email, and it it was it was insane. And yeah. you know I was highly highly stressed, and things you know like uh, if l- luckily I use Asana to um, you know manage all the projects but even with that like it was it was crazy so we only moved to slack probably like two weeks ago and it's been a lot lot better i don't have every single client on there yet I, you know i've i've been working with them saying hey go to slack go to slack go to slack clients are hard to 
training. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that was another big thing um, that, you know, hey, if you're just starting out, go to Slack. They have to join Slack and then have your team. So if you have, you know, a junior media buyer under you, have them in that Slack with that person. So you have yourself, the junior media buyer, and then the client in there. They can post um, thoughts. Uh, they can post their, their creatives, whatever they have. And now it's not just going through me. It's going through them as well. And now I don't have to communicate everything to my team. That's awesome. Uh, very powerful. We, we use Slack here, for anyone listening. We use Slack in at Learn, and I was not a big believer. The whole team pushed for it, so I finally said, fine. I was like, Skype, Slack, same thing. One's free, one's not. Total game changer. I'm a big Slack believer now. It was a total game changer for communication. All right, so um, the only other question I really had is 25 clients. About how much time, per, I mean, do you have to look at every, every, all of them every day? So what what I do is I have my media buyers essentially pull all the stats every single morning. They send it over to me, and then I look at the at their, KP, well, I don't even really need to look at their KPIs. I know what KPIs we should be hitting for each of them. And then I see the accounts that need help, and then we go, we in our meeting in the morning, I pretty much go over the account. So like we'll do a screen share and I will say, okay, well, you know, here's, okay. here's why we're not hitting this KPI. We need to launch this. Um, you need to do this. You need to do that. So you take your mornings to do a full dissect of the overall analysis, the high level. You look for the problem childs, pull those out, put them into the meeting. And that way, that's how it dictates your focus for the day. So you're not looking at every single client every day. Yeah. If one's running and going well, you, you look at them later when, okay, great. Uh, let's move right on into uh, round number three. I'm very excited about this one. This is where we're going to talk about your devious ways. <laughs> round number three, your first client. Talk to me, open floor. How'd you get your first client? June, last I, year, 2018, you said. I made a post on how we were able to cut our cost per book call in half by using Google Tag Manager and custom events to essentially um, segment people that had saw our offer on our webinar. So what you can do is you can set up a timer to drop a custom event for people that saw your offer on your webinar. Then you can create uh, a custom audience off of that and a custom conversion. So not only can you see your stats a lot better, so you can see how many people actually saw the offer, but you can create a custom audience off of that and then you can retarget um, you know, with testimonial videos, product walkthrough videos, FAQ, like a flagship article, all stuff like that. And that helped me cut my cost per book call on my own webinar. So I posted the stats about that right on my personal Facebook. And I actually got a bunch of people like, hey, man, you know, because costs keep going up. So everybody's like, you know, I really want to cut my cost per book call you know, in half. So a guy who, who ran a webinar for uh, real estate investors, he, well, he helped, he, he took investments to go out and get real estate and then gave them a return. It was like a $50,000 investment. Mm -hmm. He went out, turned key real estate. And he said, you know, my cost per book calls are like 200 bucks. Can you cut them in half? And I was like, yeah, sure. And he's like, oh, well, what do you charge? And I was like, no, I don't no. know, $2,000 <laughs> a month. Okay. So two couple questions. One, before you made that post, was the plan to inspire people to become a client? No. Okay, so it was a pretty innocent post. I don't know if that's the one I saw. I think I no, saw the one on the front. That, that post wasn't. But okay. when I saw how many people started reaching out to me and how easy the sale was, because I come from, like, I did high ticket for a while yeah. in the internet marketing niche. And this sale was just, like, like so easy. It was, like, I don't know, five minutes, ten minutes. He's like, oh, can you do this? Can you do that? I was like, yeah. Uh, he was like, oh, uh, how much is it? I was like, oh, 2000 a month, you know, three months. He was like, all right, cool. So you weren't an agency yet. You didn't even know that you wanted no. to start an agency. No. You weren't no. even thinking about it. This no. was You fell into this purely because there was a organic demand in the market. And that's no. pretty cool. All right. So the crux of it is you went to your personal Facebook page, not your public Facebook page, no ads, no money. And you just made a goodwill post teaching some cool stuff that you're doing. And... People liked it so much, they started leaving comments, I'm assuming, and liking yeah. and all of that. Now, was it in the comments right there that people started saying, hey, can you do this for me? Or, hey, can we talk? He he reached out to me via a uh, personal message, private message. On on Facebook, though. Correct. On the messenger. I think I've reached out to you on that like at least 18 times. Yeah. It's easy. It's convenient. And it's usually in relation to when you post one of these stories because I get questions. I'm like, hey, wait, you didn't talk about this or we didn't talk about this. Um, all right. 
how many personal Facebook friends on your Facebook page do you have, like on your personal one? Well, uh, yesterday I had 5,000, but I lost two today. So, uh, but so they must, them, they, they must have not liked one of my posts. <laughs> but uh, I have five, like 5,000 so friends, and, and I have around 4,052 followers as well. Okay, wow. So, like, that's like 9,052 people that I get to reach. Uh, well, not all of them, obviously, because Facebook, Facebook throttles, yeah. but I get to reach a good amount of people. So how many did you have in June of last year when you got your first? Um, probably like 4,700. Was that strategic? Did you go out and actively try to friend a lot of people? Like, is that something someone should do right now? Should they go out and start friending like crazy and grow their network yeah. before they start this strategy? Big, big time. That's, that's why I teach my clients. Okay. Like, uh, like I have an eight-week coaching program for people who don't have clients and that have agencies. And that's one of the things like you know, go into the ClickFunnels group, go into the Digital Marketer Engage group, go into the Internet Supermarketing Friends group, look for, you know, people that are looking for help that actually have a business that you can see like, oh, well, you know, they have a webinar, they, you know, they look like they're making some money, they look like they have a legitimate business that they could actually pay my fees, let me add them, see if they, they accept, and then from there, I'm gonna make posts about webinars and how we That's help people, so you know, uh, scale webinars. So. That right there, that's it. I think we should, uh, I think we could literally end this because that is organic. It's free. It's strategic. It makes total sense. And it, and it worked. And I think it would work. Do you think it will work for other things like, I don't know, copywriting or coaching or yeah. Yeah. Stop laughing, Joe. Copywriting has, he's brought, he hasn't brought it up yet. He hasn't brought it up in the episode. So I had to bring it up. Usually our guests will bring up the word copywriting. So I dropped it uh, myself. I had to keep the trend going. Um, Pretty powerful, man. So, okay, that was your first client. How'd you get your second client? Same, same way. Like I saw, was it the same post? No, no. It okay. was, it was, it was a guy that I actually have been talking to for a while about high ticket sales. Um, and he was like, "Yeah, like I see you're doing really well with, you know, these these webinars and stuff. You know, what are your thoughts on, on you know, testing out one of mine and you know, running for it." And it ended up, I ended up charging him $2,000 a month. And then his media buyer who was with him for a while got threatened by me and ended up quitting. And he was like, hey, like, do you want to take over that? Do you want to go do Google and YouTube as well? I was like, yeah, sure. You know, and he was like, okay, well, how much? I was like, I don't know, just pay me another 2000 So that ended up being like a $4,000 a month client because I added YouTube and Google, like the retargeting in, into there and, you know, setting all that up. It's a random question. How did you learn media buying? You had your own offers? Yeah, I had, my, I had my own okay. webinar offer. Got it, got it. All right, I guess let's keep the trend since the title of this episode is how to get your first five clients. How'd you get the third client? Just, just posts on, on Facebook. Posts, so, fourth, so fifth, same. yeah, so I have an email list as well, like 50,000 people. Um, you know, I am slash, you know, make money online. And that, that probably brought in one out of the five, but I would say the, the other four were mainly organic. So there's actually this, this strategy I, I, uh, that I use, it's called like the reply strategy. So you make a, a, a very good, like, um, post about let's just say like one of, one of my best posts was discover how we did over a million twenty three thousand dollars with one webinar i go over our strategies for facebook youtube google uh blah blah, blah. if you want this uh case study just put yes in the comments and i'll reach out to you once it's done that post probably got i don't know 350 yeah like 300 350 comments from marketers, wow. guy, guys who had offers that wanted me to literally reach out to them. So they became leads, like literally like that. And it's for all free. Like I literally made the post and it, it goes viral. The good thing is like, yeah. you know, the more comments you get, the more people see it, the more comments you get and it keeps going. And the great thing about that is you're literally opening up a conversation in Facebook. So you can say, hey, here's the case study. Um, just let me know if you need any help with Facebook ads. And I had so many people that, yeah, I need help. Oh, cool. Let's jump on a call. Yeah, I need help. I need help. I need help. Okay, so hold on. Let's back up because this, this is pretty this is pretty slick. I, I remember seeing one of these. So you make a post, again, on your personal Facebook page. This is not a public one. This has nothing to do with likes. It's just to people that he's friended that have said, that have responded yes, or people that have come to your page and followed. 
And so you just make a post saying, hey guys, I'm happy to put up a case study about XYZ. I just got these results, yada, yada. If a hundred people say yes in the comments, I'll, I'll, I'll do, I'll post it. And then you just start getting a bunch of people replying. You're that one post you said got 350. And typically that's a really cool way to qualify people because if they're not interested in it, they're just gonna probably skip and move on. So all those 350, a good chunk of them probably are very qualified candidates. All right, so um, now it's time to post your case study. Do you sit and go through each one and send them a personal message on Facebook? Yep, every single one. And and I, so I like the comment and then I reply because it gives them two notifications. Mike Bontempo has liked your comment. Mike Bontempo has replied to your post. So it, it and it does a third thing. It makes the, po the post more viral as well. So it adds another comment on there and more people are gonna see do, it. Do you reply and comment and right after they did it with the link to the case study or just saying, hey, got it, thanks, I'll message you? Um, no, not, not right away. Okay. Usually, a lot of the time, um, the, the case study wasn't even done. Like I, I, like I would just say, hey, I'm thinking about putting something together. Is there any interest? And yeah. people would just, boom, and then I would bang it out over two days and then I would just message them and I would like it, I would reply, I'd PM them and just say, hey, you know, here's here's the case study you requested. You know, I hope you enjoy it. Just let me know if you need any help with uh, paid advertising. And I would get so many, yeah, yeah, I need help. Yeah, I need help. Yeah, I need help. And like that, that one post where I got, um, like all those comments were probably at, we were at 68.5 um, plus another 7,500, so 69. But seventy five thousand uh, yeah. or so. Yeah. So that one post you can track back to seventy five thousand dollars in revenue. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Um that's that's really cool. It's a cool strategy. I like that. I I, I remember seeing it, but that wasn't a big part of my questions, but now we, 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 we move right into that. So uh put up the post, get a bunch of comments, they end up self qualifying, and then when you're ready with your you don't even have to have the case study done, but if you get enough interest do the case study exactly. and then reply to everybody one by one and create a conversation with them right there on Facebook Messenger. And from the, so let's say the person replies and says, yeah, yeah, I need that help. So what do you do? Then you get on a call with them? Yeah, basically. I say, hey, you know, are you available for a call, you know, in an hour? And, and the okay. thing is too, like time kills deals. You, you can't be like, oh yeah, well I'm available in like two days. People don't want to do that. Like, yeah. you know, especially when you're starting, like, hey, you know, I'm available in an hour and 15 minutes, you know, mm -hmm. be, be specific. So That's you could kind of show them that you're a little bit busy, mm -hmm. but also don't, don't wait. Like they're ready to go, yeah. get on the phone with them and, and close them. If not, you're going to kill a lot of deals. And I tell my salespeople a lot that, listen, you, you, you have somebody ready to sign a contract. Why, why wouldn't you close that deal? Like yeah. even, even if it's at 10 at night, you know, close the deal. So that's cool. All right. Listen, that, that you kind of answered the question of how you got your first five clients. It's pretty straightforward, simple, free, organic. It's almost so simple, but no one does it. No. Nah. How many people have you actually seen do it? How many students of yours? Cause you have a coaching program. About it. How many people actually do it? I have one who's really, really done it. Like so, you know, some of the students they'll do one post and then they'll give up. Oh, it didn't work. Yeah. I have one one student who his name's Lance, and he'll he'll probably see this. Um, he did fifteen thousand dollars in his first month, just just posting. And what kind friend, of what kind of uh, paid traffic paid agent. traffic agency? Yep. All right. Fifteen thousand dollars, and then uh, like fifteen thousand dollars a month. Like he literally went from like. He was at like four, then he went to $15,000 a month. He raised his price and he, he just makes posts. And so as long as people do it and are diligent and repeated, it's going to work. Yeah, it's going to work. I can't see how it doesn't work. So everyone listening right now has absolutely zero excuse on how they can get their first five clients. Exactly. Now you said one of the five came from email. Yeah. Um, how did you have a 50,000 email list is pretty big. How did you build that email list? Was that from your prior stuff that you had done? Yeah, yeah. So, so I had the, I had the webinar. I had a couple okay. other products. So on not you. necessarily the most qualified list because there was something different it, you were selling. Exactly, exactly. And what did you send to them to get one sale from there? Case studies. Case so studies. Same thing. Yeah. And what was the call to action? Hit reply to this email or what was uh, no, that? No, I sent them to go book a call, schedule once. So simple headline, you know, want my team to run your Facebook, YouTube, and Google ads, then book a call below. They book a call okay. and I'd call them at their scheduled time. So the email has the case study right there in the email. They can read it. And at the end it says, is this interesting to you? You want me to do this for you? Book a call with me. That's it. Straightforward, nice and simple. 
Love it. All right. Now, I know that there are tons and tons of other things you've since done, gone on to do, and I'm going to talk to you about them in the next episode, but this, is, this has been really powerful. Our uh, topic was to how to get your first five clients, and we have adequately answered that and simply answered it. I think every single person watching right now, there's no reason why you can't go out and close your first few deals. There's only one other thing I really want to ask you. I think we're up to round four or five. At this, I always tend to forget what rounds are on. <laughs> Um, what tools does one need? What are some of the key tools that you use in your business every day that have helped you build an agency? Click funnels. Okay. Asana, um, schedule once, um, improvely for tracking. So and real quick, uh, I want to pause real quick. Uh, actually, no, keep going. We'll go back through each one. Schedule once, uh, improvely. Uh, schedule once, improvely, click funnels, um, Slack, you had mentioned. Uh, Slack now since the past two weeks i mean you know facebook you you, you know facebook youtube or google yep. um active campaign for my emails i use i use infusionsoft as well for my membership site but it's not really for the agency okay All right. um i th i think that's that's pretty much it i mean you could really you could really get started with click funnels and a schedule once account yeah. and and be ready to go you you do a quiz quick case study on something they schedule a call you close them over the phone and they're ready to go i mean do you use skype or you just call them on the phone oh no i i use skype for international calls okay um but mainly just usually use my cell phone so if everyone wants to know click funnels to actually build the pages where you post stuff and you know give someone a chance to talk to you. Asana for your project management so you can keep your life organized, which is what we use. It's awesome, I love it. Schedule Once is a scheduling tool. Kind of connects with your Google Calendar. You can set up what days and times you're available. That way the person goes in and doesn't just say, I wanna talk to you, but they actually pick a date and time. It gets added to their calendar, it gets added to your calendar, notifications get sent out, messages get sent out. Improvely, which you turned me on to now, is really cool. So this is like a, this gives you the ability to split test your pages. And what, what else do you use Improvely for? You were telling me yesterday. Um, cool you, you could really track things very, very well. So, I mean, if you have, you know, multi steps in your funnel. Let me ask you something, though. For the first five clients right at the very beginning, is something like this necessary? No. No. Right. No, okay. You don't. You know, this is when you're like doing scale and you're starting to spend some money on it. Correct. All right. Slack. Obvious Facebook, YouTube, Google, obvious active campaign for emails, Infusionsoft for, uh, but Infusionsoft, if someone doesn't have a membership site, how would you tell them to process payments? Um, we use Wave. Wave? Yep. What is that? I don't uh, know. It's an invoicing tool. I mean, you can use Stripe too. Okay. Um, how do you spell it? W-A-V-E? Yeah. Okay. W-A-V-E is your invoicing tool. You could also use Stripe. Thanks, man. It's been absolutely awesome. Uh, listen, before we close up and we get prepped for the second one. So listen, before I even let him do this. This was how to get to your first five clients. Now, not a single one of you has an excuse. It's a very simple, organic way to do it. But he has 25. So the second episode that's gonna follow just in a day or two, so watch our, uh, just watch the feed for it, is how do you went from five to 25. But before we get there, Mike, there's a lot of people listening right now that need help getting their ads and scaling their business. How can they get a hold of you? So if you wanna book a call with me and my team, you could go to lp.org partnerwithmikeb.com forward slash book agency. Now, if... <laughs> <laughs> the shorter URL, man. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm going to try to remember. Right, right, right. LP dot book a call with Mike P. No, no. Pa partner. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, don't have, I don't have a redirect. I could do a simple one. I could do like MikeBontempo.com forward slash... You just slash. don't need more clients. Let's just say it. They're like, I don't <laughs> yeah. care. Yeah. I'm full. I'm full. All right, say it again. Say it again. Uh, people can. We'll put it. We'll put it in the show notes. By the way, you can go to onicpodcast.com. We'll put the link directly in there. But yeah, please. Say so it it's lp dot partner with mike b dot com forward slash book agency. Sorry, I'm All right, book agent. What about? Okay, well, how, where else can they like stalk you and learn from you and see these cool uh, posts you put up? Because you still um, do it. You can friend me on Facebook. Well, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, you can follow, two, you. follow two, you. Two, yeah, you can follow me on Facebook if you want to get my audio book, which is a dollar ninety nine. You go to mikebontempo.com. It'll redirect over there. All right, can you spell mikebontempo.com? Mike M I K E B U O N T E M P O dot com. I always want to put an e. I want to go B U. Oh, I want yeah. to put an E. That's why I say Bueno Tempo. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, Bon Tempo. 
Got it. Go there. Get a hold of this guy. I'm telling you. Go to the go to our uh, go to onicpodcast.com. All the stuff is there. All the links are there. Get on a call with a guy. If if you if you're a legit business, you want ads, you want someone to do it. I'm telling you. I paid him a lot of money. He knows his stuff. And on the next episode, we're gonna really find out how much he knows his stuff. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment below. Come on, hit subscribe, hit the bell thingy. Tell Mike something. Give him a shout out. This guy's taking time out of his own day to teach you for free, which is amazing. And we're very 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 appreciative of that. So thank you, Mike. Um, also if you are listening on iTunes make sure you subscribe make sure you leave us a powerful review come on let's get this out to everybody else and learn.com l-u-r-n.com go over there get your free membership get in there and take all of our amazing courses and up level your entrepreneurial self all right so remember as I always say when life pushes you stand straight smile and push it the heck back this is Onyx and Gall I will see you on our next episode with Mike thanks for listening to the fighting entrepreneur with your host Onyx and Gall 